Howdy, fellow Vine Trippers. I wanted to take just a moment before the show starts to let you know about a great website called Texas Wine Lover. They can be found at txwinelover.com. And they have a comprehensive website that can become your go-to site for information on Texas wines, winemakers, and the wineries that can be found in this state. They even have a phone app that you can download, and that will help you plan your route to create your own wine trip. So make sure and check them out at txwinelover.com. Welcome to Texas Under Vine, an exploratory podcast to scout out the best that Texas wine country has to offer. I'm your wine guide, Scott, and I'm here to lead you on an auditory expedition to the vineyards and wineries across the great Lone Star State. Each episode will cover a different vineyard, winery, or wine-related business operating in Texas. You'll hear interviews, descriptions, and details about each location that will excite you to visit and experience them for yourself. Ready to plan a wine tour? Use these episodes to choose the most interesting spots for you and your friends to check out. Most of all, enjoy hearing about the rapidly growing wine industry in the state and what makes our wines and wineries the best. Howdy, fellow vine tripper. Welcome to episode 17 for Texas Under Vine. In this episode, I was able to go out to the hill country and check out a newer winery called Meyerstone Vineyards. So this particular vineyard is actually on a farm, and this farm has been in their family for five generations. But they've been actually making wine for seven generations in their family. The current owner's triple great grandfather actually invented a de-stimmer for making wine. Her grandmother has a cellar at the farmhouse where she used to make wine from all kinds of different fruits. The land is a working farm and ranch. They have grapes and commercial wine is actually one of their newest ventures. Her family history has had a big impact on the whole Central Texas region. I'll let you hear about that more in the interview. But they are 100% Texas wine. They plan to start their own vines and plant their own vines on their 550-acre property. Uh, There's a lot of historical buildings still standing on the site. The blacksmith shop is actually used as a group tasting room, and they even do historical tours of the property if you request it, and of course, if they have time. They're just getting started with the winery and their plans to plant a vineyard. They have lots of potential for growth, and they are already starting out strong. Now, I had a chance to visit with the owner and the winemaker at Meyerstone Vineyards, Crystal Patel, in the actual still-standing old blacksmith shop. Let's hear a little bit from her story. Well, I'm here with Crystal Patel at Meyerstone Vineyards. So tell me a little bit about yourself. What got you into the wine industry? So I've been in the wine industry for about a year and a half. I'm one of the newer ones in our area. Um, But we've been making wine as a family for generations, literally seven. So um, this is really more of a culmination of bringing in, you know, my chemistry background and some management experience I had in the tech world the last decade. And, um, you know, of course, our location just right here on the 290 Wine Trail in Stonewall. So we've been making wine, like I said, for generations. My triple great-grandfather invented the distemmer that he used to make his own wine, uh, which we still have in the family. Um, My grandmother up at the house here at the farmhouse has her cellar where she had made plenty of wine with basically any fruit she could get her hands on. So it was only natural that we we continued it as a working farm and ranch to move from the row crops into, you know, growing grapes and, and making wine. So tell me a little bit about this location's history. How did it get started? It's been in your family for a while. It has, yes. I like to say we're, we're newer in terms of the winery, but we're not new to the area. Uh, my grandfather bought this farm and ranch back in the 1950s. So we're a fifth generation working farm and ranch. And the property, you know, when you drive up the drive, you'll see uh, pasture, you'll see field, uh, you'll see the tasting room. Sometimes you'll see the cows roaming in the background. Um, but like I said, we are, we're farmers, so we've planted uh, corn, wheat, and oats. 
of the last, gosh, 70 years. And we still do it today. We're kind of one of the last few ones in the area that seem to uh, plant row crops. So is there a story behind the name of the location? Yeah. So as mentioned before, the family, uh, my grandparents were Myers. And so they were, again, multi-generational family in this area. And they only had one child, my mother. And my mother got married and became a stone. And they only had one child, me. And so we as women, we married out of our, our surnames. And so I just put the last names Meyer and Stone together, Meyer Stone. And it also was the name of our, our farm. So it just kind of made sense to make it our winery name as well. And I think I read something about the big red ball out front. The big red ball, Tell yes. me about that. Oh, we get a lot of questions about that big red ball. It's been sitting there for quite some time, 70 years to be exact. Um, it wasn't always red. It was, I think it started off as like a, a brown color and then it rusted and then it was tan. And now it's my bright idea to paint it red. But um, where it originated was my grandfather invented a way to uh, basically clear land. He had a solid steel ball created um, in San Antonio and he had an axle created in Fredericksburg. So the axle went in the center of the solid steel ball. So it rolled. And then he had ship anchor chains, like the big 100 pound link chains that go in the ocean. Um, and he attached them to either side of the ball. And on either end of those chains were bulldozers. And so those two bulldozers would run parallel next to each other through the pasture. The ball would weight down the chain and it would literally clear anything in its path. Trees, tree roots, brush, anything like that would just come toppling over. And then they would come back with the bulldozers and push the brush out of the way. Um, so it cleared our farmland, some of the farmland in the area, um, but its main purpose was to go up to Colleen and clear all of the land that is now Fort Hood. And so if if literally rolled all over Texas and, um, you know, it, they were up there for two years doing that project. And when they were done, um, my grandfather's brother-in-law said he was the guy on the other bulldozer. He said, hey, it'd be really funny if you just turn that into your gate ornament. And like I said, it's been sitting there for 70 years. That's a great tribute to the family and the generations and all that as well. It is. It certainly is unique. There's a lot of questions, but I've always called it the wrecking ball. The wrecking ball. Yes. Yeah. But it's a great view for people who are coming from the road with a bright red like that. It is. It's unmistakable. I and mean, when you're driving, you say, oh, there it is. You yes. Know? Well, and the red color is in tribute of the this tractor. I have a photo of my grandfather on a tractor. It's a farmall tractor and they have this kind of farmall red color. Well, that was the idea was to paint it a color of that tractor, but it, it looks like a gumball now. It's very bright. It's kind of like that. If you've been to Target, those little red balls they have out in front of Target or whatever, it's like a big version of one of those, maybe. And we get that. It said, did you get that from Target? I said, no, ours is five feet tall and right. 15 tons. I, we like to say our roots run deep. And, you know, my triple great grandfather, I say that for the saving of breath. Uh, he settled in Lukenbach, Texas, and he came over from Germany on the boat. And he looked up in the sky and he saw the birds flying above him. And he thought, wow, wouldn't it be really great if I could fly too? Well, he settled here and he became the school superintendent and the land surveyor in the area. But really in the back of his mind, he was over here drafting up the blueprints for the first, what he called an airship. And that was to be flown by an aeronaut. And so he mustered up funds from other investors in the area and actually created what was the first airplane, um, which again, he called an airship. And so he got in this plane. He was a watchmaker by trade. So he fashioned the engine after a clock spring coil. And this actually wound up and propelled the plane. Well, he got this plane up in the air, flew it for about 100 feet. But that coil came unwound and he landed in a chicken coop and it, the plane crashed. So there was his dreams, right? Um, but it was significant for our area. It was very forward thinking as, you know, he was an inventor. And the city of Fredericksburg just named Jacob Ropeck, you know, the godfather of aviation back on September 20th and did a flyover at the airport. And if you've ever been out to Fredericksburg in the market plots, they have this little wa a garden in the back with the water wheel and some bronze structures. Well, he's one of those busts. And so we like to just tell our, our guests, hey, you know, he's related. And um, again, he was the guy that invented the distemmer. So that's kind of where our winery roots, I guess you could say, started. So uh, let's get to a little bit about the, the wine and the winery. So where do you source your grapes? Yes, all of our grapes and everything about Myerstone Vineyards is 100% Texas. So we are very big pro Texas everything. A majority of the grapes are coming from the Texas High Plain region, from various growers up in the area, um, as well as the Texas Hill Country AVA. So we have a combination of both currently. 
Um, I'm always looking to partner with growers that, you know, are really into quality farming and better, you know, growing practices, trying to limit the pesticides and, you know, other application methods just to create as quality fruit as possible. Um, we obviously have our fair share of disease pressures in this area, so there's there's kind of some limits to that, but definitely 100% Texas grape. Do you have any estate vines or plans to put in any estate vines here on your property? We have plans to put in estate vines. Um, as mentioned before, we, this is a 555-acre property. 250 acres are in field currently, and we have plans to plant um, kind of two fields to the east of where we are right now along 290. Um, with the intention of having a new entry drive right off of 290. So that's all um, been sketched out and uh, underway as we speak. What kind of soil are you working with in this particular area? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. It, there's a lot of variation in our field. So, for example, I had soil testing done where I'm planning to plant. And we have a lot of um, some sandy loam on one side, some clay on the other. Um, we've got limestone up on the other corner. So... You know, it really, you can even look at it as a visual uh, satellite image down onto the property. You can see the change in the soil. So we got a little bit of everything going on at, in this particular area, which means we're going to be planting different varietals to accommodate, you know, optimal growth for these grapes. So do you process all of those when you, you bring those grapes in? Do you process them all here on site or at another location? Great question. You know, we are in such a wonderful spot in terms of our evolution as a wine country, we're very relying on reliant on our friends and neighbors in the area. So we have partner wineries that we bring our grapes into. We basically lease their space. We rent the tanks and get all the pressing done there. And then the aging takes place in a facility that we have across the river here in Stonewall. So everything's local. It's all done here. Um, I have easy access to it. And we'll be building a production facility on our new, you know, on our new spot here soon. So what are your favorite wines that you make? Well, I tend towards reds, right? So I'm really a big fan of things that do well in Texas. And so those really align with things that are uh, grown in the southern climates in Europe. So, you know, southern Italy, southern France, southern Spain. Um, I really prefer uh, Tempranillo. I think that does extremely well in our Texas weather. Um, I do like, uh, and, and you don't see a lot of it, but it's a Portuguese grape called Chazal. Um, it's big and bold. Uh, there's not many acres planted in Texas, but we have some of that coming through. And Malbec is also a favorite of mine. We currently have one on the menu that's doing pretty well, so hopefully you'll get a chance to try it later. So what are your some of your favorite wines with customers? What are the ones that when customers come in, they can't get enough of and it's hard to keep stock? Uh, well, it goes back to that Malbec right now. It just is flying off the shelves. Customers are loving it. Um, it's been aged for 46 months in neutral barrels, so it really has spent a lot of time. The tannins have broken down, so really smooth and supple and uh, just a balanced wine. And overall, our wine style is kind of tends towards old world. So um, it's certainly we have a couple where we have it heavily oaked, but there's a couple that I, I want to keep more fruit forward. So in general, it's not going to be like you're, you're chewing on oak on all of your reds. You're going to see a, a, a nice kind of array of lighter reds to medium reds to fuller reds with varying oak profiles so that you get to appreciate the fruit of the Texas terroir. And do you do a range of whites and reds or rosés or what type of wines do you do? We do. We currently have a little bit of everything. We have a couple of whites on the menu, again, stylistically created differently. So we have some that are in stainless steel, some that are oaked. So I always kind of say people that have a tendency towards like their California Chardonnay you know, we've got something for you, but then we also have those that are, you know, really just wanting a light, easy drinking white that you can drink on the front porch. Um, we also have a rosé and we have reds. So a little bit of everything. Um, I would say, though, in general, we're going to be pushing more of a red heavy menu. What other types of events or attractions do you provide here at the location? Do you do Blind pickup parties or different events and attractions for people to come see? Yeah. So I think one of the main things that people really appreciate when they come here to Myerstone Vineyards is just our deep history. We talk a lot about history here just because it is authentic. It's, you know, we have so much family that's in this area. This property has a lot of significance. Um, it used to host the Fredericksburg Antique Tractor Show for 13 years. So that's why we have these multiple structures. Um, we're sitting here right now in our blacksmith shop, which was constructed. And there was a master blacksmith standing right here. You can still see the soot on the ground. 
Um, we also have a tractor barn, a sawmill, an engine room, all of these things that people like to just see and, and look at. So we'll do walking tours if someone's interested. Um, not everyone's into it, but if you are, you just let me know and I'll take you for a, a little field trip, I call it. Grab a glass and we'll go walk and go look at some cool stuff. Um, we do pick up parties as well, especially for our members. Uh, we try to treat our members well. And uh, we do other little events. We're going to be doing an art event uh, with an artist where you come meet the artist. She'll be displaying her paintings. And we're also doing a star party with an astronomer. So uh, we always try to have something lined up each month that's available to everyone. Our members get first access. Um, Sometimes we'll do paired wine dinners. So it's just kind of a matter of getting on our newsletter or following us on social. We'll kind of keep you posted on what's coming up. So the socials, and then maybe on your website, the best places to find those types of that information for those events? Yes, definitely sign up for our newsletter. We only send out one a month, but there's a lot of good, rich content in there about what we're doing, what's coming up around us, you know, so you can kind of plan a weekend out of it. Um, and then also just following us on socials. Our social is at Myerstone Vineyards, and then our website is MyerstoneVineyards.com. Just scroll to the bottom and sign up for our newsletter. So do you offer a wine club? So tell me a little bit about the wine club and what, how do you become a member and all the details of all that? Yes, we do offer a wine club. Uh, we currently have three different membership levels. You can either have a three bottle, a, a six bottle, or a 12 bottle membership. And what's really neat about our wine club that's um, maybe a little unusual is that we allow customization on each tier. So if you're a three club member, you get to choose one of those three bottles. If you're a six club member, you get to do three out of the six of your choice. And if you're a custom case, as we call it, you get to choose all 12 bottles. And then we also allow you to get free tastings, not only for you, but up to additional two guests. So four people can come in and get a free tasting. And then we also offer discounts based on your tier, ranging anywhere between 10 and 20 percent. Um, You also get access to our our wine member dinners and you get first access to events that we're hosting. And um, yeah, and it's just a great group of people. So we love our wine club members. So if a listener decided to come in, they wanted to check, they heard it, they want to come check the place out. What can they expect when they come to visit? So if they wanted to do a tasting, what do tastings look like? Yes. So our tastings, first of all, it's always nice to have a reservation so we can really customize your experience and have a dedicated spot for you already set out. But we do accept walk-ins. Our tastings consist of currently four pours of wine, but they're two ounce pours. And uh, you get a glass for each wine. So you're not, you know, dumping or trying to drink fast out of each one. It's a very relaxed kind of curated experience. And um, with that, you can order some snacks that we have in the tasting room. So if you want any cheese or crackers, we have those available for you. Little charcuterie options. And uh, it just really is a more kind of relaxed restaurant style experience. They usually last around 45 minutes to an hour, um, but we block off hour and a half spots. So if you're having a good time, you're welcome to just relax and enjoy your time. Does the customer pick the four wines or do you all pick the four? They're already selected. And as we start releasing more, we're going to be changing up, you know, creating more options for guests to choose from. So maybe you want more of a red heavy flight or you want more whites. So you'll have some more options. Currently, we have a little bit of everything. We have two whites, a rosé and a red available on our standard tasting menu. Do they make those reservations again on your website or someplace like that? Absolutely. Yes. We have options on our website for parties up to six. If you want to book anything more than that, we do allow groups. It's just we want to know about it so we can plan So you're welcome to email us or give us a phone call and we'll get you all squared away. And then um, what was the cost on the tasting? The tastings are 22 and they consist of four two ounce pours. So you're getting about a glass and a half of wine. What are your operating hours for somebody who wants to come in? Mm -hmm. We are open Thursday through Sunday. On Thursdays and Fridays, we're open from one to five. And then on Saturdays and Sundays, 11 to five. Okay. So a couple extra hours in the beginning. Yes. Family friendly, under 21, if somebody's got children, can they bring those? What does that look like? We are very open and welcoming of families and pets as well. So if you have your furry friends uh, that most people consider family, they have a place here. We've got dog biscuits, water bowls. Um, For kids, we have little complimentary snacks, coloring uh, pages, and um, we got a little tetherball and uh, cornhole set out in the back. So there's usually something to keep the kids occupied while parents have their adult time. Do you have any maximum group sizes, like tour buses pulling into the parking lot or things like that, that you try to handle? Okay, we want a group of right. so much. Yeah, so for the larger groups, you know, we can easily handle up to 14 people. 
Um, we usually bring them into a separate area. So for example, where we are right now is the blacksmith shop and it's a great space. You'll have your dedicated host in this area and you can be loud, you can have your own music. Um, so we kind of bring those larger groups in. But yeah, anyone that wants to come in and, and have a, a more curated experience, we've got some separate tasting areas we can set up for you. And then what are your busy and slower seasons? When's the best time for somebody to come visit? Great question. Well, we've kind of had an unusually warm winter, but you know, the best, I think the most beautiful time out here on the farm is springtime and fall. So right now we're, you know, kind of at the beginning of the year, it's wonderful, it's mild. And then the summertime is, you know, hit or miss. But again, the fall is also just equally as beautiful when it starts to cool down. We do have air conditioning and insulated space, but we are also indoor outdoor. So whatever you're personally comfortable with is is what works for you. Do you do any kind of distribution of your wine? So how, how could people taste your wines if they can't come here? Do you sell them online or things like that as well? So we do have an online e-shop on our website. You can definitely select your wines there, and then we ship to 38 states. So Texas, of course, <laughs> most of our guests are coming from Texas, but we have a lot of out-of-state guests as well. So you can ship pretty much a um, majority of the states. We also sell through a couple of distributors in um, like Austin, Texas. Farmhouse Delivery is a place you can go, and they um, create more farm-to-table type options. You can get your groceries. You can get kind of pre-prepped meals that are all from local farmers. So we offer our wines on farmhouse delivery, but the delivery is only for Travis County residents. Um, and then we're starting to talk to a couple of restaurants in the area that we think would be a good fit with our kind of our brand and, you know, things that we stand for, kind of more farm to table type places. So those are in the works. Do you have any plans for future growth? I know you talked a little bit about the production facility. What, what types of things do you hope to do with the vines and all that? Yes, we have a lot in the works here at Marston Vineyards. Um, not only are we looking to just, you know, kind of beautify some of the structures that were the former buildings for the, the anti-tractor show and create tasting spaces out of them, we do have a long-term vision of creating our permanent tasting room. A couple of fields east here, it'll be, you know, pretty much uh, full kind of service over there with allowing for members' rooms. We have the, the public tasting room, um, outdoor spaces. And then, of course, the vineyard. And so the vineyard is really important to me because of just our farming history that we really do have our own estate vines, hopefully planted in the next year. Um, so that's really what the long-term goal is for, for Meyerstone. So what, in your opinion, is the number one reason somebody who's listening might want to come check out Meyerstone? There's a lot of places they could go. So why would they want to come here and see what you have to offer at Meyerstone Vineyards? I think the number one reason... Uh, people would want to come here is just for this very curated and intimate experience. We have the luxury of being a boutique winery at the moment. You know, we're small production and every guest that comes here is going to get not only a seated experience, but they're going to have either myself or one of my trained, you know, wine ambassadors talking to them about their wines, plus our history, right? And we can talk to you until your eyes glaze over about everything that is going on on the property and, you know, our roots run deep is what we say. So I think that's really what makes us special. Well, Crystal said it best when she said their roots run deep. It was quite a special experience to hear about the incredibly deep family history they have on this farm, as well as that cool story about a relative that created the flying airship years before the Wright brothers became famous and written into the history books. This place is soaking in history, and they have a really cool timeline banner actually in their tasting room, kind of showing the history of the farm up to the launch of the winery. They definitely have lots of room to grow, and their seated tasting room was elegant but refined. Four of their wines recently won awards at the 2023 Houston Stock Show and Rodeo, including Texas Class Champion for their 2018 Malbec that Crystal was talking about. It was so tasty that after tasting it, I had to buy a bottle myself to take home as my library bottle for this episode. When you decide to make a visit, first check out their website. It's www.meyerstonevineyards.com. That's M-E-I-E-R-S-T-O-N-E vineyards.com. You'll find more history of the location there in addition to their event listings. You can make reservations there. You'll find their wine club info and even their online shop where you could purchase their wines and have them shipped to you. 
Don't forget, when you go to see them, make sure to tell them you heard about them on this podcast, Texas Under Vine. Now, I don't travel by airship, but I am going to fly on to some other fun wine destinations so that I can bring you all of the fun details on them. Your exciting wine trip awaits. Check out my past episodes to plan out a fun excursion that includes Meyerstone Vineyards on your stops. If you're enjoying the show, would you consider leaving me a review and a rating on whatever site you use to get the podcast? There's lots of people out there, and and I know that they're wanting this kind of information about Texas wine destinations, and your ratings and reviews really help me beat that algorithm and put my podcast a little higher in the listing so that even more possible listeners might find it. Also, feel free to share on your social media and link to mine, at Texas Under Vine, when you go see some of these great locations. Well, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and follow my socials to be notified whenever the next episode is posted. Until next time, happy trails and bottoms up, y'all. Thanks for listening to Texas Under Vine. We strive to provide you with the best information about wine businesses all over Texas. Be sure to check out our website at texasundervine.com and follow us on our socials at Texas Under Vine to stay up on all the upcoming episodes. Please email us with any suggestions or feedback. Also, contact us if you're interested in donating, sponsoring, or advertising on the podcast just to help us cover our expenses and bring even more great info to you in future episodes. Above all, travel safely, and most especially, drink responsibly. Don't forget to also check out the Texas Wine Lover website and their phone app. If you want to plan a trip to the wine destination I talked about in this episode, the site for Texas Wine Lover and their phone app that you can download will really help you organize a trip so you can go see them. You can check out all of the goodness that I got to experience while I was there. But as you're planning your trip, while you're on their website or their app, you can also find out things like accommodations, restaurants, and even some fun events and things that are going on at the wineries. And maybe even find one that you want to experience as part of your wine trip that you never even expected. So check them out. Again, it's TXWineLover.com.